I'm now going to continue my coverage of the University of Minnesota Marijuana Research Study. And this is one of those rare times where I would be thrilled to end a video series. And the reason for that is I don't want to say that tongue-twisting sentence ever again. When one has a stuttering problem like I do, you don't want to say something like that on a regular basis. Unfortunately, this will not be the last video. This will be one of the last. Uh, the last video will be probably a couple of videos from now. So hang in there, folks. Okay. When I began this series of videos, I discussed an Internet article that was sent to me by Andrew Wyatt. I taught all of you some new vocabulary words. Then I discussed the parts of the brain that marijuana affects. I showed you links to other research studies that were included in this particular research study. And you can look all these up for yourself if you want. I encourage you to do it. I encourage you to read the whole dang thing. Might take you many days to do it, but go ahead. All right. I discussed the participants of the study. I really did. I made several videos about the psychological tests that were performed on the participants. And now I will share with you a summary of the results of that research study. But bear this in mind, all I'm going to share with you is a summary. If you want the more detailed results of this study, you need to read it for yourself, look at all the charts, read this thing paragraph by paragraph. Because I could never do this thing justice. Never. There is so much information here, it literally blows my mind. So all I'm going to do is give you a summary of what I read. Okay? Now why, is the, why are these results so important? Because they spell the difference between, say, a person with a uh, physical illness and they want to get a prescription for marijuana to help them treat their physical illness. Now that's something I support. I really do. Because if these people really need that kind of medicine, they should get it. Yes, it would require a doctor's prescription, but hey, that's okay. At least I know they're not going to be on the roads endangering other drivers. At least I know they're not going to be operating heavy machinery. If they, if they need to be at home and take marijuana to treat a physical ailment or to treat pain or whatever it is, I'm all for that. You go to your doctor, you get your prescription, they give you the marijuana, and you're fine. That's okay. That's okay in my books. But what these people want is to be able to just go to the supermarket without having to go to the doctor first and buy their marijuana right off the shelf. Be no different than going to the store and buying tobacco. That's what they want to do. And that's a problem. And let's take a look at what the research study actually said to understand and to comprehend what the problem would actually be. Okay. Now these marijuana participants not only regularly ingested marijuana, but they also regularly ingested alcohol and tobacco. How much so? They have a full graph in this research study. Take a look at it for yourself. You'll be amazed at this. Now, what does that mean? Well, first, it means carcinogens. Because marijuana is usually inhaled. And, of course, so is tobacco. So now they're getting two, two sources of carcinogens. So what's the problem with that? The problem is that if they develop diseases because of all these carcinogens, that raises everybody's health insurance. That's right. Everybody pays the price because when these people get on this health insurance and they ingest all this stuff, that's a problem for us too. We're all paying into the same system, basically. So there, that's problem number one. Now problem number two. They're regularly ingesting alcohol as well. What's the problem there? Well, the same problem that alcoholics have without the marijuana, these marijuana people would have too. 
including drinking and driving. You see what I mean? Now, the good news is that these marijuana people apparently do not get themselves interested in any other intoxicating substances other than tobacco and alcohol. They don't seem to be interested in anything else. Which is kind of good news. Because we don't have to worry about heroin or ecstasy or cocaine or crack or ice or any of this stuff. See what I mean? So, now that's the first thing that they discuss as the results of this research today, but there's a lot more. And I will go ahead and present the rest of it as I continue these sets of videos, alright? I will tell you more in my next video. Stay tuned.